Thank you for joining us for 13 News Now at 5. I'm David Allen. And I'm Janet Roach. Those suspected in a love triangle that led to a Norfolk preschool teacher's death face a judge. Edward Shaw and Taniqua Cushman are charged in connection with Caroline Hendricks' New Year's Eve killing. 13 News Now reporter Allie Weatherton is live in Norfolk with some new information. Allie. David, several people testified today about 11 people, and one of those people were a key witness, Alex Novak. Investigators believe he may have been the intended target. A case of alleged mistaken identity is what investigators believe is what happened New Year's Eve. They say 70 year old Edward Shaw meant to kill Alex Novak because Taniqua Cushman was upset with him. Novak testified he met Cushman on Plenty of Fish and the two had a sexual relationship. He says the last time they hung out, they had a disagreement about telling Cushman's mom about a prostitution charge. Cushman also had a relationship with Shaw. Investigators say on Shaw's phone they found emails and text messages believed to be from Cushman telling Shaw she wanted someone to be taught a lesson. Investigators believe she was talking about Novak. Investigator Walsh testified to a very small amount of those text messages and there are thousands of text messages and data on that phone that really shaped the relationship that they had. Novak, who investigators believe was the intended target, says on New Year's Eve he was with Caroline Hendricks when she went outside and found a man in a black jacket hiding beside his car. Novak says Hendricks got into his mother's van and was shot several times. Novak says the person who shot her was Shaw. There's no physical evidence at the scene. Um, I think it's a, a wild story and I think it's going to be a very difficult case for the, the Commonwealth to prove. Novak said after Shaw shot Hendricks, he pulled out a gun and shot Shaw five times. Shaw then drove away. Now, Shaw ended up making it to Chesapeake, where he called 911 dispatchers and told him he was shot in a road rage incident. Now, investigators believe that was all made up. They got a search warrant and looked in his car, and they found some things like bullets, binoculars, and then also a blown up picture of Alex Novak. Now, this case will now head to a grand jury. Live in Norfolk, Allie Weatherton, 13 News Now. New information in the Hampton homicide investigation. Earlier this week, police arrested and charged 31-year-old Dante Hampton with malicious wounding and gun charges. Police say on March 25th, Hampton was with two other men, Willie Milligan and Anthony Floyd, inside a home on Cathan Drive. Hampton allegedly called Milligan and Floyd to the home after Hampton got into a fight with the person who lives in the home. When Milligan and Floyd showed up, shots rang out and Floyd was killed. Milligan and one of the residents were hit by bullets and they're now recovering. Milligan also faces charges. Testimony wraps up for day three of the Will Patterson Jr. trial. The 16 year old is accused of shooting a Portsmouth police officer five times last November. The Commonwealth's attorney called three witnesses this morning. One of them is an EVMS surgeon. The doctor testified that a tourniquet saved Officer Angelina Baclini's life. Prosecutors say Patterson shot Officer Baclini when she tried to put him in handcuffs. He has pleaded not guilty to the shooting. That trial continues tomorrow. More than 6,500 sailors from the USS Harry S. Truman Carrier Strike Group are on their way overseas tonight. They shipped out of Naval Station Norfolk this morning, and they're headed to the Mediterranean Sea in the Persian Gulf. 13 News Now reporter Mike Gooding has the details. Well, Janet, of course, this deployment comes amid much global tension as the United States continues to weigh its options in Syria. Strike Group leaders say their team is prepared for whatever may come. The USS Harry S. Truman pulled away for what's being billed as a regularly scheduled routine deployment. But given current global tensions, there's clearly nothing routine about this one. Without getting into any specifics, the group's admiral said his team is well trained to do whatever is called for. The president can send us wherever he wants with whatever mission he's got, and we're ready to go. The aircraft carrier, along with five surface ships, bring a host of firepower wherever they go. The crew has been training for this for more than eight months to get ready. We have a good team. It starts from the CO down. Good chain of command and triad makes the team motivated, and that's important. Once you have a strong triad, you have a strong team to follow behind it. What we do here as a battle group, as a strike group, is we work together. And our job is to get the job done, 
we all have a phenomenal understanding that we're all here to do the job and to be successful. And so I think that that would be our secret is that we're, we're all on the same sheet of music. We're on the same page that we need to get the job done and we'll do it to the best of our ability. And also on their way, nearly 1,700 men and women in nine aircraft squadrons. They'll be joining the strike, strike group for the deployment. Seven of those squadrons are based here in Hampton Roads, four jet squadrons from Oceana, and three other squadrons from Naval Station Norfolk. Reporting live, Mike Gooding, 13 News Now. All right, thanks, Mike. As those sailors deploy, a group of naval aviators comes home. The Blue Blasters of Strike Fighter Squadron 34 returned to Oceana today. The squadron left in January to join up with Carrier Air Wing 2 aboard the USS Carl Vinson. While on deployment, the ship and Air Wing participated in a historic port visit to Vietnam. It was the first since the Vietnam War. We're there for uh, presence operations uh, to, you know, uh, to demonstrate our resolve to our allies in the area. This is a squadron's final deployment flying the FA-18C Legacy Hornet. It will be the last Navy squadron to transition to the FA-18E Super Hornet. Virginia lawmakers are back in Richmond today, ready to hammer out a state budget. The holdup is the issue of whether to expand Medicaid in the Commonwealth. 13 News Now reporter Jacqueline Lee explains why the pressure is on for the House of Delegates. Proponents of Medicaid expansion say it will help nearly 400,000 uninsured Virginians. But some lawmakers we spoke with said expansion isn't the best idea for the state. As lawmakers from all over the state returned to the state capitol today, they were met by dozens of activists. We've all come together because we want the legislators to see us. Lawmakers are back to figure out the state budget, and these constituents want Medicaid expansion included in it. About 400,000 Virginians right now fall through some sort of a, a gap in coverage. The Republican-led House is backing expansion after years of opposition. This time, Medicaid expansion has a work requirement. I think there are a lot of protections for the citizens in this version, the House version of the um, Medicaid bill that we've not been able to get in past years. In the House budget, the federal government would pay 90 percent of the cost of expansion, and the money Virginia is able to save because of it would be reinvested. It's fiscally prudent. We're going to be saving $671 million a year to be able to spend on schools, on public safety, and on being able to uh, improve our infrastructure. But Senate Republicans argue that's not the best way to reinvest the money. Until they back away from their spending priorities and think that we're taking health care money and spending it on salary increases, it's not acceptable. The House plans to pass the budget and send it to the Senate next Tuesday. In Richmond, Jacqueline Lee, 13 News Now. Governor Northam signs a bill allowing new betting machines at Colonial Downs. The machines let people bet on past horse races without knowing which horse they are betting on. The bill's supporters hope to make it easier for the track to reopen. Opponents said the measure could open the door for increased gambling in Virginia, including possible casinos. Right now, Newport News teachers are still fighting for a raise, but some debate remains over how much they should receive. And the city says Newport News Public Schools already has the money to pay educators more. 13 News Now anchor Erin LeBeau tells us some teachers are skeptical. That's right, Janet, and teachers say getting a raise is an issue across the country. And a veteran teacher I actually spoke to today in Newport News, she said she's been working there for four, nine years. She told me today that their fight to get raises is an ongoing battle with the city. We're going to we're going to keep fighting for this. Newport News kindergarten teacher Mary Voss says she's not backing down until teachers are paid what they deserve. We believe that the hardworking employees of Newport News Public Schools deserve to be better compensated. She's part of a group pushing for a 4% raise for teachers. The 2019 school budget designated 2% raises for them, but some say it wasn't enough. The school board then requested another $100 million from the city to increase the raises to 4%. But that didn't go over well with council members. At last night's budget hearing, the budget director says that additional funds from the city may not be needed because the school board has a surplus. We believe from these numbers that we look at that there is more than sufficient capacity within the categories of personnel services and French benefits to afford all school employees any requested raise. 
But Mary Voss doesn't think that's the case. In fact, she says Newport News teachers have been through this before. I've been talking to school board members, school system officials. They have data that refutes what the city council said. Meanwhile, at last night's meeting, Mayor McKinley Price says this presentation was about setting the record straight. There is information being circulated that does not accurately reflect the city's financial contribution to the schools. And Newport News City Council still needs to approve the school board's budget before moving forward. There's another budget hearing tomorrow night at the Denby Community Center. Reporting, I'm Erin LeBeau, 13 News Now. Teacher salary debate is not unique to Hampton Roads. Right now, teachers across the country are fighting for higher pay. In Arizona, teachers held walk-ins at about 1,000 schools. They wore red for ed and carried signs, pushing for a 20% raise and more than a billion dollars in new education funding. In Oklahoma, right there, teachers are on the 10th day of a strike. And in Kentucky, agitators called in sick to protest pension reform. The demonstrations are part of a wave of educators demanding higher pay that started in West Virginia. Teachers there successfully won a 5% raise after a statewide strike.